Hello, this is Matthew from Simply Learn, and today we're going to continue our education in DevOps, and we're going to focus specifically on Puppet. So, in this session, what we're going to do is we're going to cover what and why you would use Puppet, what are the different elements and components of Puppet, and how does it actually work, and then we'll look into the companies that are adopting Puppet, and what are the advantages that they have now received by having Puppet within their organization. And finally, we'll wrap things up by reviewing how you can actually write a manifest in Puppet. So let's get started. So why Puppet? So here is a scenario that as an administrator, you may already be familiar with. You as an administrator have multiple servers that you have to work with and manage. So what happens when a server goes down? It's not a problem. You can jump onto that server and you can fix it. But what if the scenario changes and you have multiple servers going down? So here is where Puppet shows its strength. With Puppet, all you have to do is write a simple script that can be written with Ruby and write out and deploy to the servers your settings for each of those servers. The code gets pushed out and to the servers that are having problems. And then you can choose to either roll back to those servers to their previous working states or set them to a new state and do all of this in a matter of seconds. And it doesn't matter how large your server environment is, you can reach to all of these servers. Your environment is secure, you're able to deploy your software, and you're able to do this all through infrastructure as code, which is the advanced DevOps model for building out solutions. So let's dig deeper into what Puppet actually is. So Puppet is a configuration management tool maybe similar tools like Chef that you may already be familiar with. It ensures that all your systems are configured to a desired and predictable state. Puppet can also be used as a deployment tool for software. Automatically, you can deploy your software to all of your systems or to specific systems. And this is all done with code. This means you can test the environment and you can have a guarantee that the environment you want is written and deployed accurately. So let's go through those components of Puppet. So here we have a breakdown of the Puppet environment. And on the top, we have the main server environment. And then below that, we have the client environment that would be installed on each of the servers that would be running within your network. So if we look at the top part of the screen, we have here our Puppet Master Store, which has and contains our main configuration files. And those are comprised of manifests that are actual codes for configuring the clients. We have templates that combine our codes together to render a final document. And you have files that will be deployed as content that could be potentially downloaded by the clients. Wrapping this all together is a module of manifest templates and files. You would apply a certificate authority to sign the actual documents so that the clients actually know that that they're receiving the appropriate and authorized modules. Outside of the master server where you'd create your manifest templates and files, you would have Puppet Client is a piece of software that is used to configure a specific machine. There are two parts to the client. One is the agent that constantly interacts with the master server to ensure that the certificates are being updated appropriately. And then you have the fact that the current state of the client that is used and communicated back to through the agent. So let's step through the workings of Puppet. So the Puppet environment is a master-slave architecture. The clients themselves are distributed across your network and they are constantly communicating back to a master server environment where you have your Puppet modules. The client agent sends a certificate with the ID of that server back to the master. And then the master will then sign that certificate and send it back to the client. And this authentication allows for a secure and verifiable communication between client and master. The factor then collects the state of the client and sends that to the master. Based on the facts sent back, the master then compiles manifests into the catalogs and those catalogs are sent back to the clients and an agent on the client will then initiate the catalog. A report is generated by the client that describes any changes that have been made and sends that back to the master with the goal here of ensuring that the master has full understanding of the hardware running software in your network. This process is repeated at regular intervals, ensuring all client systems are up to date. So let's have a look at companies that are using Puppet today. There are a number of companies that have adopted Puppet as a way to manage their 
infrastructure. So companies that are using Puppy today include Spotify, Google, AT&T. So why are these companies choosing to use Puppet as their main configuration management tool? And the answer can be seen if we look at a specific company. Staples. So Staples chose to take and use Puppet for their configuration management tool and use it within their own private cloud. The results were dramatic. The amount of time that the IT organization was able to save in deploying and managing their infrastructure through using Puppet enabled them to open up time to allow them to experiment with other and new projects and assignments. A real tangible benefit to a company. So let's look at how you write a manifest in Puppet. So, so manifests are designed for writing out in code how you would configure a specific node in your server environment. The manifests are compiled into catalogs, which are then executed on the client. Each of the manifests are written in the language of Ruby with a .pp extension. And if we step through the five key steps for writing a manifest, they are one, create your manifest, and that is written by the system administrator. Two, compile your manifest, and it's compiled into a catalog. Three, deploy. The catalog is then deployed onto the clients. Four, execute. The catalogs are run on the client by the agent. And then five, end. Clients are configured to a specific and desired state. If we actually look into how manifest is written, it's written with a very common syntax. If you've done any work with Ruby or really configuration of systems in the past, this may look very familiar to you. So we break out um, the work that we have here. You start off with a package, file, or service as your resource type, and then you give it a name, and then you look at the features that need to be set, such as IP address. Then you're actually looking to have a command written, such as present or start. The manifest can contain multiple resource types. If we continue to write our manifest in Puppet, the default keyword applies a manifest to all clients. So an example would be to create a file path that creates a folder called sample in a main folder called etc. The specified content is written into a file that is then posted into that folder. And then we're going to say we want to be able to trigger an Apache service and then ensure that that Apache service is installed on a node. So we write the manifest and we deploy it to a client machine. On that client machine, a new folder will be created with a file in that folder and an Apache server will be installed. You can do this to any machine and you'll have exactly the same results on those machines. So why Puppet? Puppet is a tool to help manage your infrastructure for your hardware and the software installed on those servers. Puppet is a tool that makes it very easy through code to implement consistent experiences across your network. The components of Puppet are really broken into two distinct areas where you have a server where you would write the manifests, templates, and files, and that server is a master server. And then you would have a client installed on all the individual servers within your network. So you can then push out instructions to those networks. The number of companies that are using Puppet is significant. They include companies such as Spotify, AT&T, Staples, and Google. And finally, the process for actually writing a manifest is fairly easy. You'll be able to pick this up really quickly. And this is truly going to help you better manage your infrastructure through using code and infrastructure as a code principles. Thank you for joining us, watching this video. If you like this, hit subscribe below or ask us any questions in the comments below too. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.